This is James Jackson Museum of African American History. We're glad to have you before us today, and we have one of our primary wonderful citizens that I have known for years, Gladys Gavan. And she's uh, a young 99. And she's here to tell us about her history in Muskegon and her own personal history. Uh, Gladys? Yes. When did you come here? I came to Muskegon in 1943. I uh, had a friend here in Muskegon who heard about the city, Muskegon Heights, needing a skilled wor worker to work in the public housing project that they were opening up for blacks called Fairview Homes. Yeah, we have a display on, on the wall here of the beginning of Fleur, Fleur, Fair Flu, Flu Home. Because my understanding that uh, 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 African Americans did not have a place to stay here and they were, uh, uh, and we were staying in all kind of uh, 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 run down places, box cars. Yeah, there were very, there, there was almost no housing for African Americans at that time. And the government, uh, the city of Muskegon Heights needed uh, workers here to work in, to do uh, work in the foundries to make war material. material. Uh -huh. And they needed somebody to work in the office to uh, register these people and rent them this uh, housing, Fairview Homes. Was this so a separate homes. place in the city office or was this a, 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 a particular agency of the city office? It was just, it was for, no, it was for blacks, it was open occupancy, but it ended up with all blacks because they're the ones who needed this housing. And then sometimes whites were afraid to move around us. Uh, you know how that was. Okay, so tell me how you found it when you came here. How I find it. Yeah, um, what was it like? <coughs> After you live 99 years, you forget some things. <laughs> but it was, what was it like? There were not too many blacks here. But those who were here were working in the, in the, um, Camelton. Camp, for, um, Lake Eden in the foundries, in the factories that were here to make war. Where were I you guess. living when you came? Where did I live? I lived in, uh, I was a re resident manager in the Fairview Home Project. Project. That's where I stayed. And that was right off Getty and, uh, and Sherman, around that area? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, did you find much prejudice when you came here? <clears throat> the schools were integrated. Uh, there were places that just didn't hire African Americans. Yes, there was prejudice here. How about for housing? Could could our people uh, move anywhere? No. No. So, so what did you, how successful you were in doing the, the Fairview uh, uh, housing? Well, it was always full 
because that was the best housing for blacks here in Muskegon Heights. So we had no problem in keeping it occupied. How much did it cost people to live there? Do you remember that? It, <coughs> there was a, uh, it, would depend, it depended on their income, what they could afford. A two-bedroom unit, which as I remember, was $48 a month for two, a two-bedroom apartment. Did you have much uh, uh, problems there? No. No. There was no, uh, no problem in collecting the rent. No problem collecting the rent. Because people <coughs> were, gl were glad to be in this de decent housing. Yeah, tell me this now. Uh, uh, what were the, uh, the streets like and what was the Muskegon Heights like when, at that time? Streets, yeah, like. with a lot of trees, uh, with a with a dirt road, or with a uh, 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 asphalt r roads, and and what kind of transportation? There was, you know, I was I was trying to think if there were was a uh, uh, you know there were buses, but I think that. There was a, uh, a railroad in Muskegon Heights. Well, yes, there still is. The railroad went through the city. Oh, that's what it usually went through the poor area or the black area. They put a track right through the middle yeah. of town. Yeah. And that's what they did here. Huh? Mm -hmm. In fact, we can see it from here. But City Hall is still a, a track. Yeah. There was it. Uh, uh, was there much uh, problems out in the street at that time? Like crime. You crime, yeah. No. no. You could leave your house open. We could. No, there was very little crime, as I can remember. Let me ask you that. Uh, do you remember the churches that were here, uh, were yes. not here or were Philip, here? Philip Chapel was here, and that's that's the um, church that I uh, <coughs> joined when I got here, and I sent my sent my son to the Sunday school of Philip Chapel A.M.E. Church, and it was. Hmm, where was it located? It was not a very, <laughs> it was like a storefront. Yeah, you know. yeah. When you keep beginning and starting the religion, you have to have a place to dwell in, and a lot of times they use the storefront because it's yes, more too. reasonable. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so what did you do for entertainment then? There. <coughs> There was a movie. We made our own enter entertainment. We a group formed a club called the uh, Iconic Bridge Club. Where was that? Where was it? Yeah. It was. It was made up of. Mostly the people, professional, there was a doctor came and um, uh, teachers. You had a black doctor here? Yes. Was that Dr. Garland? That was Dr. Garland. All right. And so what else did you do for entertainment? We played, we, we, there was a nightclub, as it was called down in Mesquite and run by... Farmer's Market down there? 
Yes, and it was uh, owned by Mr. Brown. Oh, yes, Ruby then, Brown. Uh, what was it? Pa no, Paige Brown was the first manager of Fairview Homes. And he had a brother. Was he white or black? Who? Of the manager. Paige Brown was black. Okay. He was the manager of Fairview Homes. Uh, and you know Mr. Brown who had the, the nightclub down there. Yeah, I, it was before my time, but I know he had the nightclub down there, and then uh, uh, eventually Ruby Brown. That was, that's who I was thinking of. Ruby Brown? Ruby Brown. Yeah, and he kind of took it over and had it down in... Uh, and that's where <coughs> we went for entertainment. Music, black musicians, and was the Urban League here at that time? Uh, the Urban League was established about. Uh, it wasn't here when I first came. The Urban League. It was. Uh, What year was that? Was the NAACP here that time? Oh, shortly after I came here, there was an Urban League and a NAACP. The first <coughs> I remember about the Urban League is uh, Doris Rooks who came from New York, and she, uh, she was very active. In fact, yeah, I can see, how did they do that? Doris Rucks. Was she teaching at that time when she first came here? A teacher? Yeah. No, no, not okay. In school, no. Oh, uh, okay. Now, tell me this: uh, Did you go out at night and move around and and feel you were safe? <coughs> Didn't go out too much because there was nothing to do. Not, nothing to do. You, uh, we had house parties and. Those were, you know, we made, made our own entertainment. Uh, tell me this, do you remember some of the things that, you, some of the places you couldn't go uh, because you, you were African American in, in, around here in the city? Did you ever travel to North Muskegon? No. Did you ever travel to well, Norton Shores wasn't existing at that time. No, no, that was just a field, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Woods. a farming community. All right. Uh, okay. Then, how did the police treat the? Were there any black policemen? There was one black policeman on the force, and his name was. Um, that wasn't Spencer, was it? <coughs> I think there was one before Spencer. All right. But I can't remember. Okay. And uh, so you felt safe in moving around. How about where you shopped? Where did you shop at? Down on Western. Uh, there was a there were there were stores, you know, uh, like depart like department. Stores. There's no segregation and stopping? No, you could, you were free to go to move about in the downtown. How about the movie houses? There was no segregation in movie houses. There was no segregation in movie houses? All right. Now, uh, how about going to the schools now? There was one Muskegon and Muskegon Heights were the big part of where African Americans went to school mm -hmm. and there were no problems 
well, there were problems, but at least we 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 functioned. In the yes, it was in, not it, segregated. It was not a school for yeah. blacks and a school for whites. All right. Uh, how about at that time? What was the uh, price of groceries? Can you remember that? No, I I don't I. I don't remember, you know, whether they were high or... They're cheaper than they are now. <laughs> oh, yes, uh, but people <clears throat> in Muskegon Heights, the people who live here in Muskegon Heights were all working, and so they had money, income sufficient to feed their families and <clears throat> but they were not allowed to live they did not live well, in white people white, in the white section yeah okay now in getting around uh, the area did you have uh, adequate bu buses or did you have streetcars then? We had buses. Mm -hmm. And you could get around pretty well? Uh, in the buses uh, if you didn't have a car. Yeah. All right, now, how about, did they pay you a fair salary when you came up? <laughs> I thought it was. You thought it was, you yeah. could live on it? Yeah. Yeah. Now, where'd you come from? I came from Michigan City, Indiana. Oh. And Michigan City, Indiana is about 60 miles from Chicago. Well, uh, just for the audience to know, Lattice's brother was, was the mayor of uh, Gary, Indiana. Uh, Gary, Indiana. What was his name? Richard. Hatcher. Richard Hatcher. Richard Hatcher. Some might have heard of him, and uh, they were real close. And uh, I used to kind of keep up with the politics of Gary uh, through uh, Gladys. He was the first black mayor. Him and uh, Mr. Stokes from Cleveland. Cleveland, yes. They both were elected. Mayor. He was elected uh, Cleveland mayor. And Richard was elected Gary Mayor in 1968. That 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 seems so far away, but it's just yesterday. Yes, and he Richard was elected five times after that. The mayor term was four years, so he served 20 years as mayor of Gary. Where is he now? He's in Gary still uh, involved in community uh, activities. activities. Yeah. And uh, he also <coughs> teaches at uh, Valparaiso University. Valparaiso, yeah. That's Val where he Val got yeah. his law degree from uh -huh. I remember he was writing in the news then. Uh, tell me this. Uh, what did you, when you first came here, what was, what did you think of Muskegon? It was pretty much like rural, where I came from, which was Michigan City. Were there more yeah. black people in Michigan City or in uh, yeah. Muskegon? There were more in, in Michigan City. Uh -huh. Because you had a foundry there, didn't you? Pullman Standard. Oh, yeah. That's where Pullman. my father worked. Yeah. And they made uh, boxcar wheels. Yeah. And he later put them on trains and... Uh, and freight trains. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the first black union <coughs> was with the Pullman Company when on the trains. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, 
what what did the what did the the uh, city of Muskegon look like when you came? City of Muskegon or Heights. Heights. Yeah. Uh, I remember there was one grocery store, and I walked from Fairview Homes, my Fairview Homes apartment, through the woods to this grocery store. Was it run by black folks? No. No. Okay. And as for the prices, I I, I don't know yeah, that, they don't were, remember. that they were any. They were. You, you felt they were reasonable, huh? Or I didn't question it. I didn't good. question it. That's where you had to go? That's what, mm -hmm. uh, Along that line. Uh, from what I can gather, there was a lot of trees around uh, in, during that time, and there was a lot of dirt roads. But, yeah, it was not developed until late, later people few people built their own homes and they built them in these clear, you know. Yeah. Was Camels already built when you came yes. here? They were built right mm -hmm. right down the street. Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah. They were already and of course Lakey's was already built. Lakey's and that's where uh, many, many of my tenants worked at Lakey's and Camel and Cam. And there was another one. Well, there was several. Uh, uh, it just closed. There was another one on the lake, uh, owned by a guy named Otto. I don't know Otto got his last name, but there was uh, that was another foundry here. And the court, uh, uh, I, I think, uh, what was the place that made the tanks? I think they had a foundry too. Um, what was that? Uh, and uh, but we mainly worked in the foundry, huh? Factories. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and they made good money, you know, for that. So uh, I mean, the wages, I guess, were. Well, they were. What had happened? They, they, a lot of uh, our people came up from the south, and they, they got the five dollars a day plus uh, salary, and some were only making as low as fifty cents a day in the south. So they came here to uh, uh, a fairly a decent income. Mm -hmm. The only thing was that uh, they had no housing. See, you you became, uh, 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 excuse, uh, I'm going to say this, the queen of the housing, because you enabled uh, uh, them to have decent yeah. housing. Right, and and it was the best housing that many of them had ever known. You know, in the yeah. south, uh, we had uh, coal stove uh, for heat. Uh -huh. We had the Heaters with the with and and the, there was a coal company he, here that supplied the coal for those. I heaters. think it was right right around uh, here. Yeah, it was. In fact, close. we used to weigh our patients that were over 250. We'd send them down here to be weighed on the scale because we didn't have a scale big enough. <laughs> oh, and he. he I called him one day, the, the owner, mm -hmm. and he said, yes, you can send your patients down here. Mm -hmm. And so that's the way we knew how they weighed oh, yes. on there. So it was, I remember when that was here, when I first came here. Mm -hmm. What year did you come? Uh, uh, 1960. 1960. So you got a few oh, years yeah. ahead of me. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so I came here. and. Uh, I fell in love with the lake. Yes, that was a big attraction. Was there? The, could you freely go out to the lake? Yes. If no one stopped you or anything, no, on there. Um, 
Okay, now how were the police to you? Were they kind or or indifferent? Well, I, I would say that they were kind. I mean, they, they did their job, what they were supposed to do. And, I mean, they didn't, that that I know of, pick on for race. Racism. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how were the children when you when you came here? The young people will say. Mm. See, every I asked you that question because everyone's always saying the young people doing this and the young people doing that. They're not like the young people like they used to be, and uh, and so I'd like to see what you thought of the young people that was here, especially the young African Americans? I can't remember any, any, any outstanding problem with the young people. So it was a little different world from what we live in now, huh? Oh yes, I had, I had a son who was, he went to school and I had no problem with uh, him as a young, he was not a teenager yet, he was only about eight or nine, and uh, I just don't remember that uh, there was a lot of, I know there was not a lot, a lot of crime and violence in the street from the young people. There was, I guess there was a lot of people always on the street because people did a lot of walking now. And yeah, that, because they didn't have cars. cars like they do now. Yeah, on that. Uh. And my, uh, yes, I remember walking from Fairview home to Hubby and Getty down to Western uh, downtown. That's about three miles, about three miles. I remember walking that all the time to go downtown. Okay, tell me more. Now, I was told that people, especially in Muskegon, that African Americans would have little st uh, 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 stores on their porch, and, uh, or, and, or they'd have a barber shop in their house and things like that. Do you uh, know anything about that? <coughs> See, there was the move, uh, the, the bottom they used to call it down there. Mm -hmm. Trying to think, <laughs> where I got had my hair down in somebody's house. Somebody who little, little, had a little business right in yeah. the house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and uh, I, I I was told a restaurant you couldn't go into the white restaurant, <coughs> and and that uh, that people had little restaurants in their house. Like, uh, uh, and uh, you went in there if you wanted to eat, but you could not go in any of the uh, uh, white, so-called white restaurants and um, any of the larger restaurants. Do you? There weren't any in Muskegon Heights that I recall any restaurants, but people, Barbecue, did their barbecuing in their backyards, you know, and yeah, as I said, I remember that one grocery store, it was down on Hoyt, Hoyt Street. And that kind of supplied you what you need. Yeah. As far as food, oh. 
were you very involved very much in, in, in uh, African American politics? Uh, I remember working in the Urban League and the NACP uh, to get things, to get people, black people uh, hired, hired in the different uh, uh, I remember uh, a, uh, a dairy company oh, yeah. that we bought uh, milk and stuff from, but they didn't have any black employees. Was that the, the dairy country, uh, company that later on they they boycotted? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was through the. NACP, I think. That they had yeah. a boycott and, uh -huh. and they hired... They got that changed. Yes, yeah. because I think just before I came in 60 that they did that. Uh -huh. That one of the, uh, uh, I think it was Donald Cheeks that got hired uh, as a milkman. Yes. And the, the town was quite elated. For that. Yeah. Well... That was a... The, Politics were beginning to develop around there, and so on. Tell me the politics of the black church when you were in the church here. Uh, my, ch my church is the Methodist Church, and they didn't do. I don't remember. You didn't raise much cane as the Baptist, huh? Huh? I said, you didn't raise up much cane at the Baptist church. Well, the Baptist wasn't... Wasn't here. Yeah, I guess it was here. But uh, they weren't raising any cane. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Take your time, uh, honey. It's no hurry. We got all day and we want to squeeze that history uh, you have and you out. I don't seem to have much. Remember, I, I don't remember what, you know, like, where did I go to get my hair done? I know it was at a house, you know. It was yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, was, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me, tell me about the, the young African-American ladies. Did you have uh, uh, much dealings with them? The ladies? Yes. You know, we always talk about the males and what the males did. What, what, what were the young ladies doing that came up? The married ones and the unmarried ones and so on. We played cards, got together and played cards in each other's. The main thing was playing cards, huh? I wouldn't, I, let's see, what, you mean for entertainment? Yes. What was the main entertainment, the house parties and the, and the cards playing? I would say the house parties. <laughs> and I, I maybe may remember this, of course, it's back in the 30s, but Ruby Brown was the first student at Muskegon High School, and he was the first uh, African uh, so-called football player on oh. the team. I don't know if you remember that. I don't. I don't remember that. I don't yeah. Remember that. But I'm sure you know. I came in 1943, and he was he was already already set up in that. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, the, uh, down there. Cafe, uh, a bar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was running that, and that's where they had a lot of dances and things? Well, later on, they were, they were dancing uh, at the, uh, uh, down on Western. I remember James 
those Griffin sponsored a lot of dancing, uh, bringing in the, uh, black orchestras from out of town, you know. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I can't remember the, the name of the place, but that was a big... You know, they, uh, 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 back when you came, they had a lot of house parties to pay rent. They call them rent parties. You remember those? Yeah. It, uh, did you go to some of them? No. Why? Because they were rough? Did I go to them? Yeah. No, you, they... you see, you go in and pay them a dollar, and, and they let you in and give you a little meal. You I, don't, I don't remember anything. You don't remember that, I huh? Did, I didn't participate in the house parties. Yeah. Because you, 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 you I had a good job. You were a quiet little African American woman. <laughs> I was pretty quiet, yeah. Yeah. See, well, you made a big mark on this town. You, uh, uh, a lot of uh, the people have a lot of respect for you because you came here and worked hard. Their grandchildren, I run, run into their grandchildren now and they tell me who they are and I remember that they were the grandchildren of some of my tenants that, uh, and some of them turned out pretty good. Oh yeah, a lot of, a lot of our, our uh, people turned out quite well with all the Despite adversities the, and things you yes. have that would happen. Uh, did you ever have any, any problems uh, in Muskegon Heights. Not with well problems. Not that I didn't have any. You didn't have I any. didn't have any problems in Muskegon Heights. Uh, I guess you remember when we had a a, a rent strike over at the. Uh, uh, projects and you took Which, over from the from the uh, manager there and we got rid of him and put you in there. You remember that? Remember when you had that job? You became the golden uh, lady in the heights and you took over the job from from uh, uh, the manager. And it was Paige Brown. Well, this was the white, was that a white manager? No. This was the white manager. Remember you took it over? You were the assistant director. And we had a big, uh, in the 60s, we had a big uh, 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 strike in which people held their money. And, and we kept their money. We had about 50000 hey, This is the... the is they it, kept their money from the project? Yes, mm -hmm. and they kept it in the bank, and, and the government told us we could keep the money in the bank, but if we spent it, we would be criminally liable. And we kept the money in the bank, and one of our, uh, uh, one of our settlement points was that you would become the manager. Do you remember that? Tell me why. Cause they, why were... Why were they withholding the rent money because they wanted to get rid of the manager, and they and he wouldn't quit, and the government wouldn't fire him, so they uh, uh, refused to pay rent, so the people wouldn't get uh, thrown out. They they uh, the leaders of the uh, movement uh, took the money, took their regular rent pay that they would normally pay a month. To, to the office there, and they put it in the bank, and they kept records of it, and, uh, and they wouldn't give the money up. We were going to court. Uh, uh, if we had to give the money up, money's up, and we wanted you as, as the, uh, to be the new manager, and you were the assistant manager. You don't remember that? I remember when I became assistant manager, and then you but, became manager. But I, I don't remember this 
<laughs> yeah, I became the uh, manager, and, and it came all out of that. What we call it kind of like a boycott, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, there was one person living there that was that was running the boycott and collecting the money, mm -hmm. and and that uh, uh, we were trying to get you in there, and they didn't want to change, even mm -hmm. though there was a lot of negative things on the present manager. And one one was he was discriminating, and and so we were fighting uh, that. Yeah, mm -hmm. And the other thing, he he just wasn't doing his job like he should. You don't remember? I don't remember that. That time, huh? No. Well, I remember it so well. In the sixties. Yeah, it was in the sixties. See, that's how you got to know me well. Then. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, w when I uh, when I got involved in that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and, they, and then he they got rid of him. We turned the money over to the government, and uh, you ran it for a number of years. Didn't you retire from there? Oh yeah. Yeah. See, you ran it. That that was in the sixty. When did when did you retire? Nineteen eighty four. Yeah. See, you, you've been there a long time, and I, I remember that that was a real strong point because it kind of pulled the people together mm -hmm. there, and, uh, and you were such a quiet, dainty uh, African woman, and uh, uh, we, we did very well with something like a black, a, a black fairy tale where things... Uh, got fine, taken care of, and, and uh, well, until you retired. I know, I, I worked hard to, I mean, uh, I wanted to make <clears throat> that public housing something that the Heights could be proud of. Uh, I wanted it to stick out like, like a sore thumb, but in a good way. Yes. And so, but I had a lot of problems with tenants not wanting to, not wanting to keep up in their property and and uh, keep it like it should be. You know, I didn't like having a curtain growing out of the windows because they've taken the screens out. You know, I didn't like to, I didn't like to have barbecue. Uh, pits in the front yard, in the front, because the, on the back we had a nice back yard and uh, there was space there for them to, that's where the garbage cans were, and there was room back there for them to have their barbecue pits instead of on the front street. In the front yard. So you had to struggle with that. I had to struggle with that, yeah. And they wanted to. Uh, well, most of them were from the south, and uh, in the south, to them, grass was a dirty word, grass. So I had a lot of trouble uh, trying to not uh, trying to. Uh, get them to keep their yards nice, because the place was landscaped real nice. Now this is after Fairview Homes became East Park Manor, public, public housing, public, I mean, uh, per permanent. Fairview Homes was temporary, and then the government built East Park Manor, which was brick and well landscaped, and it, I wanted to make it real, uh, you know. Real jazzy, real uh, home, but, but having some uh, style to it. People, I wanted people to, and most of the tenants were mm -hmm. proud to be and be there. And they, uh, they kept, up, kept the place up nice, but there were a lot of them who just didn't care 
Well, we sometimes uh, where people come, we have to kind of train them and and uh, teach them and to know uh, why we're doing this mm -hmm. and how it made you feel. Sometimes it's a struggle. Yeah. I mean, and if we don't struggle to help change it, you know, in that struggle is a lot of love, and mm -hmm. if we don't struggle and put that love in there, then people don't seem to want to change so much. And, uh, and that's, that's a big problem when you're dealing with a lot of people, how you can get to love each other so they want to help each other mm -hmm. and, and go from there. And uh, that's, that's a big struggle. And, uh, some of us been trying to do it a lifetime. You've been trying to do it a lifetime. Yes. And, and uh, you've been with your quiet voice. Well, I didn't have the problem. I, I retired in 1984, and the drug problem was just beginning to show up in the housing project. It was just beginning to show up. So I didn't, I didn't go through that Here. drug. Thing, you know, yeah. with the tenants. Now you watch it. I watch it. <laughs> and um, it saddens me, you know, when um, people are so... Not caring either yeah. for themselves or right. each other. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. Well, it's been so nice to have you. You're a fixture in the community, honey, and it's wonderful that you came to the museum because you're not you're not only part of the old, but you're also in the new. Well, and we I appreciate want it very to much. Commend you for getting this, doing this. Yeah, but you've been an inspiration. You, I know you didn't do it by yourself. I know you had, a, you know, people helping you. Yeah. But uh, I'm real proud of this. Thank you. We're, we're proud to have you. Incidentally, we, we had earlier talked about uh, 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 Gladys in the museum. Gladys was one of the first citizens, African-American citizens, that when she heard we were going to have a museum, she sent some uh, historical uh, pieces over to us. And we, we just love her for that. And every yeah. once in a while we drag her down here. We hope when she gets about 110, she'll come back. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, you'll have to drag me in uh, All right, then. I can hardly make it now, but oh. I'm glad that oh, you're... I live to see this. Yeah, and if, uh, if I get 100 or 99 like you, and I got much, much to say and much to think about, I'll be grateful. Yes. Okay. Okay, Dr. Jackson. Thank you. In yeah. office to uh, register these people and rent them this uh, housing, Fairview Homes. Was this so a separate homes. place in the city office or was this a, 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 a particular agency of the city office? It was just, it was for, no, it was for blacks. It was open occupancy, but it ended up with all blacks because they're the ones who needed this housing. And then sometimes whites were afraid to move around us. Uh, you know how that was. Okay, so tell me how you found it when you came here. How I find yeah, it. Yeah, what was it like? <clears throat> After you live 99 called Fairview Homes. Yeah, we have a display on, on the wall here of the beginning of Fleur, Fleur, Fair Flu, Flu Home. Because my understanding that uh, 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 African Americans did not have a place to stay here and they were, uh, uh, and we were staying in all kind of uh, uh, Run-down places, boxcars. Yeah, there were very there. There was almost no housing for African Americans at that time, and.
and the government, uh, the city of Muskegon Heights needed uh, workers here to work in, to do uh, work in the foundries to make war material. Material. Uh -huh. And they needed somebody to work in the old years. You forget some things. <laughs> But it was, what was it like? There were not too many blacks here. But those who were here were working in the, in the, um, Camelton. Camp, um, Lake in the foundries, in the factories that were here to make war. Where were I you guess. living when you came? Where did I live? I lived in, uh, I was a re resident manager in the Fairview Home Project. Project. That's where I stayed. And that was right off Getty and, uh, and Sherman, around that area? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, did you find much prejudice when you came here? <coughs> this is James Jackson Museum of African American History. We're glad to have you before us today and we have one of our primary wonderful citizens that I have known for years, Gladys Gavan. And she's uh, a young 99. And she's here to tell us about her history in Muskegon and her own personal history. Uh, Gladys? Yes. When did you come here? I came to Muskegon in 1943. I uh, had a friend here in Muskegon who heard about the city, Muskegon Heights, needing a skilled wor worker to work in the public housing project that they were opening up for blood. The schools were integrated. Uh, there were places that just didn't hire African Americans. Yes, there was prejudice here. How about for housing? Could, could our people uh, move anywhere? No. No. So, so what did you, how successful you were in doing the, the Fairview uh, uh, housing? Well, it was always full because that was the best housing for blacks here in Muskegon Heights. So we had no problem in keeping it occupied.